I was asked to try out the Gender Games. It's a slightly unusual situation in that I had done an interview with Patrick Strudwick for UK BuzzFeed about my coming out and about coming out as trans about three years ago now. And the very next Monday, a publisher got in touch and said, have you thought about writing a memoir? And I was like, no, because I'm so young, so impossibly young. And I thought, you know, memoirs for, were for my deathbed, kind of. But I was really interested in writing a book of like essays about gender and about the different ways in which gender impacts on our lives, regardless of your gender identity, whether you're a man or woman or trans or cisgender. I really think we are all, you know, bombarded with stereotypes and very limited notions of what it means to be a man and what it means to be a woman and I was really into that and so when I sat down to write the book though I realised that there was a it was a memoir it was like an accidental memoir because you know gender started to affect me the day I was born and so actually we start off by looking at the ways that gender affected me as a baby and then kind of move through my life really. We call the book The Gender Games because it sounds a bit like The Hunger Games and it reflects my YA background. I'm an author of YA fiction as well. And I think that's what it is. It, gender, on one hand, it's this incredibly serious thing. You know, being born into this world as a girl limits you from the day you're born. And we know that globally. Girls are disadvantaged in ways that boys are not. Um, similarly, to be born transgender could be seen as you know, a hindrance to some and a celebration to others as well. And of course, in many ways, masculinity can be a nightmare as well. So on one hand, it, there is some like Hunger Games life and death stuff there. But similarly, we're all free to play with gender as well, because on a smaller scale, you know, gender is in my hair, it's in my makeup, it's in my clothes, it's in my interactions on a day to day basis. So we are all free to an extent to play around with notions of male or female because they're not set in stone. I started writing as a child. I used to write Doctor Who fan fiction for my grandma, um, like audience of one. Um, but I didn't think that people from working class families in Bradford could become authors. It was not really a career path that was obvious to me at all. And so I, I learned to trade, as my granddad would say. And I went off and I became a primary school teacher. And during that time, I was still doing bits of freelance writing. I used to review some music, I used to sort of smash hits. And I did little bits and bobs for a local newspaper. And then just one summer, I needed a project. I had nothing to do. I was really bored. The weather was terrible. And so I decided to give writing a novel a go. And that was, was what became my debut. And that was, I think, back in like 2009. So it's a while back now. So many people inspire my writing. I mean, on one hand, you've got like Philip Pullman, who I think is one of the best storytellers we have. And I doubt very much I would have sat down to write a novel if it hadn't been for Philip Pullman. But, you know, Mallory Blackman as well, who is so poised and so dignified, you know, and she's been such a voice for black youth in children's literature for the best part of 20 years now. And she was such a deserving laureate. I also looked to Louise O'Neill, who's an amazing YA author because she's so outspoken and she never backs down and she's so sure of her convictions and I think she's she's been incredibly supportive of me as well but there's so many you know I'd love to in many ways say that there's like a divery bitchy like empire or gossip girl in the author community but all I meet is amazing people who we've all got each other's backs and a, a lot of particularly in children's and young adult a lot of women authors as well from Kim Curran to Non Pratt to Lisa Williamson Holly Bond you know I'm really pleased to have a really lovely group of friend writers friend writers. That'll do, why not? I think we put a weird pressure on both women and people from minority groups to be role models and it's impossible because none of us are perfect and I think as soon as you start holding up anyone to be role model material you're in for trouble and actually a lot of my favourite role models are people who have made mistakes, are people who've gone wrong and you hold your hands up and you say yeah I got it wrong because if we're not free to make mistakes, if we're not free to go wrong, that's more pressure than I could deal with. That said, especially when I wrote some of my non-fiction for teenagers, like This Book is Gay, for example, you know, I, I, I hoped that would find its way to the right hands and I hoped it would in some way help people. Yeah, I mean, I have to start a good 90% of my sentences with the phrase either speaking for myself or I don't speak on behalf of the trans community. Um, there are as many ways to be trans as there are transgender people. And the whole thing with the gender games is that actually 
it takes the topic of gender games beyond trans people actually because I think the danger as well if you become kind of like a spokesperson that you are kind of just it's a bit of an echo chamber you're just speaking to your community and actually both with my glamour column and with the things I've done for the pool and with the things I've done in the book it's about reaching outside of that community anyway because I can't speak on behalf of that community you know I've been transitioning now for nearly four years but I'm still a baby to it I'm still very new to this I'm making it up as I go along I don't know what I'm talking about ever never writing for glamour has been amazing and that was I can I can thank Donna part of that one I went in to see her at her shop on Carnaby Street and she said it was the first time I'd seen her since I started my transition and she was like oh my god you look amazing of course um you look amazing um are you gonna write about it and I was like, yeah, maybe. And at the time I was writing for Attitude and I was like, maybe I'll do something for Attitude magazine. And she said, no, because that's kind of slightly preaching to the converted. That's within the LGBT community. She was like, I need to know about this and I want to know about it. And right then and there, she said, right, I'm emailing Joe Elvin now. And that's how it came about. And like a week later, I was sat in a cafe having brunch with Joe Elvin. And it was wonderful. She said, you know, I don't know what that means and I want to know more about that and I want to know about this and she's like, I'm afraid of getting it wrong, I'm afraid of using the wrong pronouns. And so we realised very quickly there was a real opportunity to kind of take something which was, that is quite marginalised. You know, I think we read a lot about trans women in the press but in quite a tabloidy way. So this was a way to sort of take trans women issues and just put them in a mainstream women's publication because, you know, and I've said this Lots of times, you know, women's issues are trans women issues and trans women's issues are women's issues. They're the same thing. And as well, it's been, you know, I've never kept a diary. So keeping the column for Glamour has been, I guess, my way of keeping a diary as well. People get sexuality and gender confused all the time. And I can see why it's complicated. They're separate things. I think people are wising up to that now. And it is quite simplistic to say they're not related because, of course, they, as you move through life, your identity shifts and interacts and nothing is set in stone. You know, over my life, my identity has changed a number of times. So I'm firmly in the never say never camp. But when you really boil it down to its simplest, simplest things, when I was about four years old, I knew I wanted to be a girl. I knew that with everything in me. And it goes beyond wanting to be a girl. I just really felt God you just are a girl. There's no two ways about it. Why do people keep calling you a boy? This is bewildering. Then later, when I was about 14, 15 years old, I realised I fancied boys. And somehow those two very different things kind of got mixed up. Um, and I think I can see, you know, as a teenager in the 90s, it's easy to see why I thought I was a gay man. You know, I was surrounded by gay men. We had Will and Grace and Queer as Folk and all these cultural references that I just didn't have for being trans you know and it sounds crazy now but I just didn't know what a trans person was so there was nowhere to go really with that um, at that time um, but yeah now as an adult looking back with hindsight it's really really clear that you know the fact that I'm attracted to men and the fact that I am a girl are two very different things it's apples and oranges I'm not even making this up, but I think reality TV has been the single most important societal change for LGBT people in the last 20 years. And I know there's been some like real activism taking place, but for people like my mum, for people like my dad and my grandma and my stepmom, actually seeing LGBT people in Big Brother, in Pop Idol has created a change because it's normalised it and humanised us. Like when you see somebody like Nadia on um, Big Brother, we spent a whole summer with her and we really got to know her as an individual and she wasn't just a trans woman. She was a real character and she was Nadia, she was fully Nadia. And you know, since Nadia, we've seen a little trickle and more and more trans people kind of break through into the mainstream. And obviously that culminated with Caitlyn Jenner, who was, you know, huge celebrity presence. And so now I don't think there's many people who don't know what a transgender person is. And that's because of reality TV and social media as well, because I think YouTube is important too. I've come to realise over the last four years that there will be people out there, men and women, who are never going to buy it. They're never going to buy that I'm a woman. They're never going to buy that trans people are the gender that they express themselves as. And there's two ways of dealing with that. You know, if people come to me and are polite and have questions, I will tell them politely why, you know, I've always felt 
always, you know, it's my earliest memories, you know, I've always felt really truly at my core that had all been well with the world, I would have been born biologically female and why that can't happen and I can't do anything about that, there, there isn't a time machine, there isn't a do-over. So I'm making the best of what I've got, you know, and since transitioning I've felt more like myself and more authentic and like really like I've cast off a lot of my sort of own bullshit kind of and I feel like I'm truly authentically myself. But then of course there's people who are not polite and there are people who send you horrible tweets and troll you and you know use offensive hate language and people who tell you to kill yourself, people who tell you you're a freak or that you're mentally ill and I don't think there's anything you can do with that. That's not a kind of level that I engage at. I'm not going to scream at people because I just don't think it's going to change their mind. I think there are hateful people in the world. But I think, you know, the, the bigger question, I guess, should be about should, should platforms such as the BBC be giving hate speech a platform? And that's a much bigger conversation and one that groups like All About Trans, for example, do have. And, you know, I've been to training at the BBC where we've helped people, you know, swat up on their trans issues and how to present us in a fairer way. Since I started the Glamour column, I've realised that most women, most people are incredibly inclusive and just couldn't give two shits about how I identify because people have got their own stuff going on. You know, whoever you are walking down the street, you've got, oh my God, I forgot to pay that bill and I've lost my phone and I've got to pick up the kids. Who's going to pick up the kids? I've got to take the dog to the vet. There's always stuff going on. Most people couldn't care less how I identify. Of course the danger is when you're having a bad day, when you're feeling really down and there's these people on the internet kind of saying these same sort of hateful messages time and time again that you can start to believe them. And you know I have spent time sort of questioning, you know, am I changing what it means to be a woman? And, and of course the new is no, not really. Most people don't care. And that was another good thing about the glamour column which is it gave a lot of people a chance to sort of get in touch with me and most people are really chill. Most people just don't care. I think, you know, I am, you know, now that I know who I am, I think it's possible for me to enter into a relationship with someone else, but I'm not in a rush as well. You know, I've waited a long time to figure me out and I don't expect some man to just sort of rock up immediately. But I think I'm looking for, and it's, it's so cliche, but you do just want a man who's going to make you laugh and a man who is quite chill, I think, as well. I'm all about that. Um, but again, I'm happy to wait. And, you know, since since starting my transition, I've had one sort of serious relationship that was great. And so I know it can happen. It can and does happen. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I can be patient. And I keep lying about how old I am anyway. So, you know, I, I'm going to stay the same age. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I think it's interesting because transitioning you've got to do the disclaimer because it does become part of the whole trans community transitioning is not about hair and clothes and that's a bit of a myth which is that we're playing dress up and it's you know it, it's not about being a drag queen being a drag queen is a very different thing i don't perform i don't get paid when i get up in the morning and get dressed if i was a drag queen at least i'd get paid um this is more just about expressing myself in a way that i've always wanted to express myself so, you know, when I was growing up and when I was a teenager, I couldn't wear the things I wanted to wear and I couldn't express myself the way that I wanted to express myself. So now I get to do that. But of course, the way, I, like any woman, the way that I express myself varies on a day to day basis. You know, what what do I want to say today? And today I wanted to say I'm a lady sailor. Whereas tomorrow it'll be something completely different and that's the fun of fashion and I know some people hate clothes and hate fashion but I just think it's about you know making a statement you know who am I going to be today kind of. It's tricky isn't it because I am a freelance writer who has no money. Please send me money. I will set up a Patreon. Um, and so it's about sort of dressing yourself within your means and so for me that's a lot of vintage stuff and so I spend a lot of time in Beyond Retro and both in Brighton and in London. Vintage shops, charity shops are amazing. Um, my tip for the top is eBay. So what I'm fortunate enough and very privileged in that I get invited to nice things like award ceremonies and things. 
you can go on eBay and buy a second-hand designer dress at a fraction of the price. I've never paid full price for a designer dress because I don't have eight grand to spend on dress. Who does? Um, so it's, it's a mixture. So it's about being savvy. But in terms of designers, love Vivienne Westwood, love Saint Laurent. Um, House of Holland is so fun. Love Moschina. I think there's a real sense of humour to what Jeremy Scott does there. Um, on the high street, you know, can't go wrong with Topshop. Um, H&M were brilliant. In the early days where I had to buy a, a ton of like just day-to-day -day essentials, places like Henny's were amazing because you can just get all the basics that you need. Um, so I think, yeah, that's where you would find me on the high street. Um, sometimes Kos, Reese occasionally. Yes, yeah, lots of places. I'm trying to think, I'm sure there's somewhere really obvious that I'm missing, but never mind. Oh my God, that's such a difficult question. Okay. If I could pick any three people in the world to go to the pub with, it's really tempting to say people that I already know because I know that I love those people. And so, but in terms of people, <laughs> so just mentioned three friends that nobody's ever heard of. So like people that I really, really get on with, sort of like Catelyn Moran is hysterical. Um, jo Elvin from Glamour, the celebrity gossip is worth it alone. She's been in the industry for, what, 20 years. Um, Sally Hughes, the makeup artist, has one of the driest sense of humour in the world. So, yeah, let's say them. But also your very own Lauren Laverne as well, who is one of my favourite people in the world. So, In the book, I have personified gender because I think he's like this bogeyman that comes to you the day you're born and he you know, slithers out from under your bed and starts to tell you how you should behave and these are the things you should do and these are the things you shouldn't do. And I leave it up to you, the reader, to dis to wonder whether your personal bogeyman was a he or a she. For me, the bogeyman started off as a man telling me this is what you're meant to do, this is what how you should be. And maybe when I started my transition, I think possibly the bogeyman slowly started to become a woman and sort of give me a different set of messages about you know, ooh, do you really want to eat that? A lot, a lot of calories in that. And ooh, are you going to fit into that dress? And have you shaved your legs today? Do you need to shave your legs today? And this is a different voice in your ear. And I think the voice in my ear is slightly still man because of course a lot of those messages have filtered down from the patriarchy. And of course, the patriarchy is definitely a man. Gender, what next? Um, I think it's, we know already, um, if you have been following social media or if you have even been watching like breakfast tv there's an emerging conversation about do we really need binary notions of gender what good is this you are a man or a woman is that really helping us at all and that's one of the questions that's in the book as well and you know i'm really lucky in that you know i'm friends with some people who I identify as gender non-binary and they just have a very different view for me um, and I think slowly but surely people are starting to understand why some people would reject very limited notions of male or female, um, either as a protest or because you just don't feel like either. You know, I'm very lucky in some, in some ways. I've been a lot luckier if I'd have been born a girl, wouldn't I? But I'm very lucky in some ways in that my sense of self is really secure. I just really think I should have been a woman and I think I've always been a woman. For some people, it's just not that simple. And I think that's the next conversation that we'll be having. So what do I have to do to be sent more free stuff? is a really important question that I think people haven't asked me enough. So what they can do is they can get in touch with me on my website and send me free things. That would be really good because I'm poor. I'm a starving writer. It'd be good. <laughs> Ooh, so what am I working on now? A lot of promotion for the book. I will be traveling the country, the length and breadth for most of June and July. I'm, I'm seems likely I'll be coming to a festival near you. I've got Hay Festival and Edinburgh and Bradford Festival, Crossing the Tees. And we're doing a Waterstones tour of Leeds, Liverpool, Newcastle, Brighton, which is where I live. You would think I would know that, wouldn't you? So yeah, so we're doing a Waterstones tour as well. So um, we've got that to get through. And then after that, I'm going to take the rest of the summer off to write my 2019 novel. Thank you.